Let's have a look at how to trace precedent and dependent cells. Well, first of all, what on earth does that mean? Um, any formula in a cell has cells that link to it that feed into that formula. And precedence and dependence are those cells. More will become clear as we go through. This is all part of a section called auditing. And we can do all the auditing on the auditing toolbar. I've brought that auditing toolbar up by selecting View, Toolbars, Formula Auditing. But you can also get to it from the Tools menu as well, uh, where we can go down to um, Formula Auditing. And right at the bottom of the screen there, it's just off your screen, it says Show the Toolbar. But we've got all the items here that are also on the toolbar. So that's formula auditing. I like to use a toolbar. Okay, so what can we do on here? Um, some of the things you actually need for the syllabus, some you don't. Uh, the ones that we're looking at now that are in the syllabus are these four here, or these first six. The first one isn't actually required. It's called error checking, but I'll show you what it does anyway. When we click on that button, it starts going through the whole spreadsheet looking for errors. And if it finds an error, it pops up and tells us. This tells us that we've got an error in cell G14. We'll look at cell G14. It's this one here with the hash value error in it. So it's picked that up for us and asks us whether we want some help. Uh, we can step through the calculation to find where the error is. We can ignore it. We can edit it in the formula bar. Or we can simply click on next or previous to go to the next error. So that's a good way of finding if indeed there are any errors, especially on a larger workbook. The next uh, button does trace precedent. And all that means is show the cells that precede the formula or function. I've got cell H18 selected, and in H18 there is this formula. Yes, we can simply look at that and say, well, it's got G7 in it and D13. But clicking this button will make that graphical. It'll show us. Let's click the button. And it's showing us that three cells all feed in to this formula. Why is that useful? Well, it could be because those cells are not very close together. They could even be on different workbooks or different worksheets. So it's very easy to, to not be able to see all the cells that uh, precede the formula or function. The useful thing here is that these lines are sort of interactive. If I double click this first line, for example, then it automatically highlights the cell that it's linked to. If I double click this blue line, it automatically highlights the cell that it's linked to. So we can very quickly see by clicking on this button, Trace Precedence, which cells feed in to an answer. To get rid of those blue lines, we can use the next button, which is Remove the Arrows. And they disappear. Let's try that with a different cell. I'll select this cell. It's got a function in it, quite a complex function. Trace with precedence, and it shows us, using the arrows, all the cells that feed in to that function. A really useful feature. And remove the arrows. The next button, Trace Dependence, goes the other way around and says, well, okay, this cell here that I've got currently selected, that number 1021, does that feed into any other formulas or functions. That's harder for us to see. But by clicking on that button, Trace Dependence shows us that that answer feeds into two other calculations. It feeds into this calculation and it feeds into this calculation. And we can remove the arrows using the next button. So that's showing us which cells this answer, this number, feeds into trace dependence. It's very easy to, because I can click on a few cells and trace aspects of it. Oops. Um, 
and it's very quick and easy to start getting uh, lots of arrows on the screen that can start getting very confusing. So we can remove the arrows using the two buttons I've shown you, or we can use the next button that does remove all arrows. So we've looked at trace precedence and trace dependence. The next button that we're interested in is trace errors. You can see this cell here as an error, has an error in it. Errors are always defined by that hash symbol at the beginning. That could be a really complex formula or function. It can be hard to track down where the error is. So by clicking this button, trace error, it shows us where all the dependents are and also shows us by the dashed black line where the error lies. So I've got blue lines there, it's just like the trace dependents. But those, those, that number is okay because it's blue. This one in black is where the error is. Now this little sign here simply means that the cell is not on this worksheet. It's on another worksheet. I can jump directly to that by double clicking the black line. I says, where do we want to go to? And because there could be lots of errors, it allows us to select from the list. There's only one in this instance. Click on OK and we jump directly to the cell and we can see why there's an error. It's because we've got a non-numeric value in there. So if I change that to a numeric value and then I can go back onto my auditing worksheet and I've eliminated that error. And rub out the lines. So that was trace an error. You select the error cell and then you click the trace error button, but it only works if you've got an error. So I'll just undo that a couple of times. So we've still got our error. Select the cell, click the trace error button, shows you where the errors are with the black line, double click it to jump to that cell so that you can put it right. Or even if you can't put it right immediately, you could add a comment to that cell, but that's for another video. Finally, if you watched my last video about data validation, I'm not going to go through what data validation is now. I'm just going to select the validation worksheet. Validation was a way of um, making sure data entry followed predetermined um, parameters. Um, these two buttons allow us to show where validation has gone wrong. I can circle invalid data. And you can see those circled signs and invalid data. And that's because on this column, we set up a validation that said, only allow the entries in this cell to be either F or M. And you can obviously see that D and sex don't come, don't fulfill that criteria. The criteria for this column was simply a number between 15 and 65. And obviously the word age is not a number between 16 and 65. So that's, and to remove the circles, it's that button. Circle validator, clear it. So that's the auditing uh, toolbar. It's worth having a little play around with that.